Jonathan Hull, do you have updated calcium scores in arterial age? How often do you check them? Hey, what's your cardiovascular inflammation panel tell you? Or your oral glucose tolerance test? Or your metabolism? You need to test. Don't guess. Here's how to do it. I did that once. You know, because I see myself as a lab rat, I like to experiment on myself and demonstrate and show people what is going on with my body. I had a number of like 98 and it was, what, four or five years ago. I haven't gone back. I don't know if I ever, I probably will. Even the guys that use calcium score a lot don't recommend that you do it more often than once every five years. I just don't use it that often. There's that channel, Ivor Cummins. That's what it, all he talked about for a long time when he was financed by the Irish guy that discovered his own heart risk using a calcium score. I'm a big fan of calcium score. It doesn't sound like it. You know, there's balance to my perspectives on it. Calcium scores just show calcium. Calcium is what happens when your plaque has been stabilized. So I want to know how much unstable or soft plaque that you have if you're my patient or that I have if I'm looking at myself. So that's why I, I don't use a lot of calcium scores. The other thing is they cause a lot of trouble because one of the most common reasons for coming to see me is having an elevated calcium score. And so then I'll typically, I'll have people come see me. They don't reverse, ex but there are rare exceptions. I have three patients that have had some decrease. Jerry Kurth did a video where he and I talked about it, he had maybe a 15% decrease. John Lorscheider had a 50% increase. And John used those quite often. I had a patient recently who does make a good case that he's had some decrease. The rest of us, that's the only time I've ever seen it. And most of the time when you have a decrease in it, I get a little bit nervous because I worry that you're maybe going the wrong direction and getting inflammation again. Once you have soft plaque, the way we know that you are stabilizing that soft plaque is it starts getting calcium flex. So why this irony? It seems like opposite logic here. Positive calcium score means you've got risk for heart attack and stroke. A really high calcium score means you got a whole lot of risk. Well, both of those are true. But Ford, when you're telling me, look, you have these patients that come on board with a positive calcium score, they lose 30 pounds, they get their act together, they decrease and maybe lose a lot of their insulin resistance and their calcium score increases. Yeah, that's right. That's one of the major reasons why I say, hmm, be careful about how you interpret that. So why is a high calcium score supposed to be a higher risk for heart attack and stroke? Because it certainly wasn't in those patients. That is exactly the point. You have to understand the context, the gestalt, the what's going on. In most patients who are not doing anything, they haven't had a reversal in their lifestyle. They haven't lost 40 pounds. They just go to the images or us on the corner and get a calcium score and it's really, really high. That means they also have that much soft plaque in addition. The people that I'm talking about come see me, lose the weight, get where they need to be, and then get a big increase in calcium. What has gone on is they have replaced the soft plaque that they didn't see on the first calcium score with hard plaque, stable plaque. That's what's going on. While we're talking about calcium score and plaque, the American Heart Association put out a recommendation about four years ago, 2017, 2018. And they said, look, if you have a zero calcium score, you don't need a statin. Unfortunately, that's not the case. I did a video on exactly that. I looked at, there is now a study out which demonstrates there's a significant amount of people that have soft plaque but don't have calcification yet. So if you've got soft plaque, you should reconsider whether or not you're not taking a statin.